Hi, Carol here, and I'm back to do a video with this card that's been sitting on the sidelines waiting to get completed. So I thought I'm picking up my grandchildren shortly because it's my husband's birthday today, and we are going to do a dinner for him, and I want to get this video out. Anywho, so it's a honey pop stamp set. Adorable, yes. And you use this uh, bubble paper stuff that you cut, and I'm gonna give that a go. I have not used this since when I first started to do videos. I used a bit off the top, and I wanna try it because, like I said, I wanna start using my products. And what better way than to get it out and use it? <laughs> so anywho, what's gorgeous about this Inky Attic stamps and I got this at Michael's, is that it shows you coloring if you want some ideas on how to color it. Let me get it up against some white. There. Isn't that sweet? And so what I did on the video last week when I had a migraine, I just couldn't get through it. I started coloring, but I honestly, I couldn't get through it. But anyway, it came out really sweet and I wish I could have shown you the color techniques here with the Copics that I used but I'll lay it here and we are going to do color one that I have placed on here and already masked and dried for your convenience <laughs> for my convenience so I did the balloon in uh, the turquoise colors to match my card now this and then I did the, uh, I don't know where, how you see it, but the little elephant in the great warm gray tones. And a lot, a lot of mixtures of Copics, which I like to do. I like to be all over the place. And um, let's see. So I used the this color paper from Stampin' Up. I'm not sure what it's called. And I'm going to do a shaker card. Anyway, and I used vellum. I cut a piece because I'm going to use my sewing machine. Because Sherry, my little amigo, sh she showed me how to thread it and put the bobbin in, which I haven't moved since she's been here. So I'm going to use that. I cut out some Hello out of vellum with the stamp set that I had. And I'll show you it in a bit. So I've got that ready to go. A lot of this card is ready to go. We'll see how it works. And this is going on the inside. No, this is going on the outside. We're going to watercolor that with my Peerless watercolors. So we'll get that up there. Here's my Peerless watercolors. If you haven't seen the way I created this book, I got the binder for a buck at the thrift store. It's all leather. And um, I took my laminator. This is what laminators are good for. They are good for many things, but I did a page on each one so that I could uh, mix my colors on here. Every, uh, every other page with my watercolors has a palette. As you can see, I use it. And that way when I sit it down like this, I just use my colors there. So we're going to do that. I've picked out the oranges to go with this uh, turquoise color. Set that aside. And I picked another one of these up at the thrifts uh, at the dollar store, these containers, because my sister is going, as soon as she goes over to her American post office, is going to bring me my 60 Zig pens, my clean color pens by Zig. I'm really looking forward to that. You can see I bought the container. And I picked out some orange sheets here because I colored this. This shows that it is red. Or, I'm sorry, yeah, red in there. Yellow. Sorry, yellow. But I decided to do it orange so that I could mix up the colors and make it bright and lovely. So I have a five and a half by six inch card, which is generally what I like to do. Use. I'll turn on my um, let me see how I'm going to do this. I'll wait to sew it in just a second, okay? And the only thing I don't have is uh, 
a sentiment, but we can do that too. So what I did is I took a sheet of white paper and using uh, my dotted, boy, I put everything away when I cleaned my room from doing that cover, mixed media cover to my watercolor journal. And now everything's gone away. So I'm just gonna have to walk you through this. It was a, a, um, a die set and it has the dots. I cut a square using the die set. Then I ran this through my Big Shot Pro that has the, you know, it's uh, 10 inches. I wanted to check that just real quick. It's right beside me to see if it was 10 inches across. Nine inches, you see? Nine inches across, nine and a quarter actually, inches across. And what that Big Shot Pro is good for, one of the things, is your embossing folders. You can put the whole folder and run it through without having to squeeze it and get bombs. You have a ton of room. I took the Stampin' Up! Uh, die that has those little clouds on it. And then I took my set that Janet, I am going to show you how to use this. You had asked me. I did this set from Stampendous. I love Stampendous. And I took one of the border dies and I did that on the bottom because I thought it looked kind of cute. I ran this through as well to have it torn apart. Things look nice when they're torn apart. It gives it an element of surprise, an element of uh, goodness there, yikes. I've, I was painting last night just by myself on a paint board sitting in the lazy boy chair and I did a paint and I have so many paint brushes in there. I did a beautiful brook and uh, things. I'll show you that uh, later. Let's see. Okay, so we have that. We'll s and let's get moving on this or I'm never going to get done because all I do is talk. That's why I want to edit. Took some enamel dots from Michael's. When they have the sale on, these are wonderful enamel dots. Wonderful. They're so flat. That's what I like about them. They're not raised. So that's good. And then I just took a bunch of white and the, the turquoise and cut out tons of little borders for my sentiment so that when if I this video runs out I can put it on after but I wanted to just show you the coloring in that so we are going to need right now and then after you do sorry I'm gonna jump in here after you do your copa coloring when you have the dark tones and you want to get some dimension use your grays Use your grays and then fade them out with your lightest color. And it works every time. And then go over it with a black marker on the sides. And what I like to do, which I will do while I am looking at it, if I can find my scraper, which I don't see right away. So I'll just grab scissors. They didn't always have scrapers, right? What I like to do, because I'm fussy cutting, is curl the edges up and then it will look like a total hot air balloon without little uh, indents. I'm going to show you the difference between one and the other because you know when you fussy cut and especially when I did this I was not feeling well and these barometric migraines some of are hard for me. See the difference? Can I get that close up for you? Even if you learned this, it'd be totally great. See the difference of that? Maybe you can't, but it just makes it look totally uh, round, where this has some jaggedy edges from trying to get it round, because I didn't have a die for this, obviously. And that looks really sweet, and it gives it a flat edge, which I really like. So anyway, I threw that in for free. So let's get going on the shaker card. What are we going to do first? Oh, we're going to cut a piece of um, acetate. And then this is the fine liner masking fluid, which now is at Michael's. And you can use your coupon. And this is hard to find. It's $20. You use your coupon. It's fabulous. It has the fine liner on the top, which keeps it clean. And my little amigo Bonnie, she got the last one when we were there before they flew home. I had to order this online. I ordered two of them and because I couldn't find it anywhere. And I walk it we walk into Michael's and there's one of them sitting on the shelf. You just 
you know, give it a shake and put it on and you end up with this. It just feels like gum. It's totally great. So I covered the image and this is going to go in my window like they're looking out of the window like that. And we're going to add some. There we go. Isn't that cute? It looks cute just with the masking fluid on. Then I'll Copic color it. Cut out a piece of vellum for behind there and I'm going to run this with my sewing machine and I'm going to use my fabulous micro beads and I've done this video three times now because the phone kept ringing and this is the case that I keep 30 of them and I got them on sale at Michael's from the dollar store. It's a dollar store case that doesn't cost a dollar. So let's go. Let's cut out a piece of acetate. I lost the one I had for this and acetate to cover that we're ready to go one two three I took some foam from the dollars from Walmart actually because I'm going to use this instead of my roll of tape to get it up there I cut two pieces here we'll see how that works with the fun foam with on the back is it's got the sticky already okay let's go Get out the peerless watercolors and I'm going to do the turquoise, orange, and turquoise, orange, and purple. So let's get my brushes and we're ready to go. I don't need to put it down on anything because I'll instantly dry it. Let's see. I don't need a detailed brush. Just a wet brush. I guess I'll use a flat brush to move that around. Water brushes are really nice. This one I didn't fill with water. So let's get my handy dandy. Which way does this go? In. Like that. Isn't that cool? Instant water. Like I said, some of them I don't fill right away. Sprayer here on the side. Put that over there and let's match our colors here. This is the Peerless Dollar. I got this leather case binder at the do at thrift store and I put some laminate in here so I could mix up colors. Every other page is laminate. On there to mix up so let's grab some oranges I'll set those up here and I put the masking fluid on and let's play there we go won't take long to dry I have my Tim Holtz uh, half I think it's quarter inch or half inch brush it is a half inch brush and I have my water off to the side we're ready to go so I have this sitting there so I can kind of match up the balloon and match the colors up. So we'll wet this down like so. You can go right over your masking like that. That's the beauty of it. I want it nice and wet. And like I, I don't want to tape it down and go through all that right now. It'll resist it, which is wonderful, until we're finished. I have a good amount of water, as you can see on here. There we go. So we'll start with uh, cadmium yellow and get a little bit of yellow in there. Isn't that unbelievable? It's so nice. And I'll put some chrome orange on the top. Let's work this around. Isn't that pretty? It's just so pretty. And let's flip this up and we'll do some purples and the turquoise. 
Let's see. Let's get in some. It says, I use it a lot, I can see, but I, that heliotrope. Trope. I'll put a little bit in here. I thought of using, and be careful because it will mud mixed with the yellow, as you can see. But if you have a little bit of paint, uh, baby wipe or paper towel, which I still haven't brought up to my room. Let's see if we can get that to kind of move. There we go. Love it when it does that. Oops. Not when it does that, but when it does that. Okay. And it's going to, um, let's see. I think I need a really dark orange. Let me move over here and see if this will work. No, yeah, it's not too bad. All right, and then let's go to the turquoise. Turquoise blue, peacock blue. Looks great because that looks like a peacock blue. And let me move this out. I'm sorry you're not even in the frame. Uh, as you can see there, um, I just wrote all the names down on here on each page. So it's easy for me when I'm doing this. So let's get some of that in here. Add some more water. The peerless are wonderful, wonderful watercolors. Can't wait till my sister brings. She was supposed to bring them yesterday, and I was really disappointed. But I didn't want her to see that because the bridge over to Niagara Falls, New York, was an hour wait, and I certainly understand her not wanting to sit for an hour. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Matches this perfectly. There we go. Isn't that cute? So let's set that aside. Let's clean up our space with a baby wipe. Normally I would get a piece of paper and clean it up with paper, but for time's sake, let's blow, blow it dry. Why did I throw that out? There we go. All right, so let's take, it may warp, but it doesn't matter because we are going to put it with foam tape on the back. Just take your baby wipe and I'm gonna try to not go on the mask. Oh, it's flattening out. Awesome. So pretty. The one thing that's different with the watercolors is when you use the, um, the, what are they called here? I put those away too, but the new, um, watercolor powders there they stay exactly the same as you put them on your paper where where the peerless gets lighter and um don't move stuff around like i always say because i can't see them right off the bat but you know which ones i mean so isn't this cute there we go then all you have to do is peel this off to show the uh, stamp which I used Memento Tuxedo Black but for watercoloring you can also use see this isn't that cute look at it reveal that your VersaFine uh, ink Onyx Black ink is wonderful with uh, watercolors you don't have to worry it'll tell you right on the package I've used that forever I'm just trying to not 
rip the paper off with the image. Just take your time. I still haven't gone into my online classes and watched all of them yet. I've only watched two. And that's from last month. It's terrible. Okay, so now that's off and it reveals this beautiful elephant. There we go. So let's get into some Copic coloring, shall we? With the little bit of time we have left. And I'm going to try to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to edit this. I am. I don't care if it takes me all night tonight to, to get it down because there's, uh, I'm obviously not going to be able to do it in one take, but I can break. I'm going to give it a go. So let's see. Copics. Let's get the warm tones out. Warm, warm, warm. Warm, and we'll see which way this goes. I think I'll use a five as well. So I have taken out just about everything the warm zero zero, the warm seven, two, four, six, five. Let's we'll start with the zero zero on the elephant just so I can lay a wet base because it is watercolor paper. And when you put the mask on, don't go, like whatever you mask is what's going to be white. So sometimes I get too cautious and I end up not putting it right to the edge. There we go. He's right there and he's right here. It's an easy, easy pick to do. Let's go with the W2. And... I almost want to uh, and I'm using the side of my brush I almost want to use the pure list to color this so instead right here I'm just laying a base so I'll do I won't do um, one thing at a time I'll just put my base color out there and he'll look nice no matter oh that's the ear See what I'm saying? And two and the four. Now I'll start putting in my mid-tones. Which on watercolor paper Copics work wonders. Oh, I don't know if it's the tooth that grabs the ink, but I love doing uh, watercolor, using watercolor paper when I work with Copics. I'll leave the center free. I'll leave there, there. So easy. Easy peasy. You're just working with the grays. I'll leave the middle open. I'll go back with my W2. Wet it up again. Just so I can see. And I'll put my dark tone in there. And if you go on that little guy, it doesn't matter because the colors are going to be darker. There we are. Then let's go in with the W5. So cute. And you all know what I mean with working on watercolors. Color paper oh, just grabs the Copic and wants to play with you. And because it's water a watercolor image, you don't have to be so fussy because you want that kind of uh, over-the-edge look. You know what I mean? 
There we go. And I'll come in with a W7. I'm going to jump up and just go around the edges like so. I want to keep it so it looks like I've watercolored instead of Copic colored. So I'm just going to dot it like this. Go down his little trunk erroneous. Couldn't you just color? I could color all day, but I don't. Olivia and I will probably do. Uh, she wants. She's coming and she wants to do a video. So there we have our little guy. Jump back to the W2, and if you want, blend it in because that tooth does grab it. I'm using the tip just to get the lines out. There. So cute. You can feel the tooth grab that. There you go. That didn't take long. Sometimes you don't have to be so fussy, right? Let me show you this. Isn't he cute? Cutesy wootsy. Now for this little guy. I'll put this up. See him? That's him there. And we'll work into the YR. So we'll do the YR31. It's kind of an orangey. It matches right here. Which if you've used Copics a while, you get used to which colors. Kind of look the same. This is ear. And we can do the YR. We're in the three family, but I'm going to pop down to the saturation being a uh, one. I'm going to go YR15. Remember the one is the saturation. It's the first number. And it's going to be in the YRs, I just, I have to go darker because the elephant is dark. And I'm leaving the center free, as you can see. And then I'll go YR24, making the saturation a 2, and blending this out towards the center of the face which looks really cute. It's grabbing that and I want some little lines so I'm going to jump to YR27 and the point I'm going to add some of my dark tones to get this little jagged edge. Pop it up in the ear a bit. I'm going to make him a bit longer there. Can you see that? And I'm in the YR family. Um, I'm going to do the two. Let's see. I want kind of a yellowy skin color. YR61 with the saturation here. Really, it's a six. So they've taken a lot of the saturation out. Remember? Zero, it's very saturated. Six is over halfway they've taken out the saturation which is nice if you're going to do it like this then jump over to your E's and your earth tones and grab a 2.5 staying with the saturation of 